Do you drink in the morning every day? Brown grass. Oh, every one I can. What time did you come here today? About 9 o'clock. And what time do you think you'll stay? <laughs> so the drink is gone. I open at 8 o'clock from 8 to 10, 10 30. I usually have a crowd, people who usually bartenders or people who hang up for I was hanging up last night, night before. And after 10, 10 30, the village people come here. The band? <laughs> well, I have to say, some mornings at Rawhide can be uh, quite a circus show. It's like when you have four drag queens, three leather queens, a couple people in suits, and a group of club kids. It's like, okay, let's start the day in this way. And they, you just kind of wonder what, what their mindset is. It brings everyone together all at the same time. Yeah. It's kind of nice watching it as a voyeur. How would you describe the morning crowd? You take me by the day, you don't know. How would you define, uh, Kurt, the morning crowd here? Well, from 7.30 to, you had, say, 15 people. Uh -huh. like, uh, we'll call it breakfast crew. Right? You see, breakfast of champions. There you go. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can bring your breakfast in, uh -huh. but they have a cocktail over. And very interesting in the morning, people, not many people drinking beer. What do they drink? People have drinks. Really? Have drinks. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Hey, I think not because they're alcoholics. No. Not really. <laughs> What's your favorite drink? Uh, Jack Daniels. Not this morning, huh? You, you mix it up or it looks like a vodka Oh, this. Cranberry. You're right. Yeah. You're right. It is. Uh, because uh, I've got a lot of things to do. Jack Daniels is a decent buzz. Uh, what's the earliest you ever come in here? 7.30. We open up. 7.30? That's cool. Yeah, I'll help him out. Uh -huh. Open up and check out this guy and make sure he's doing his job. <laughs> make, just make sure he's doing yeah. his job and he go off to work. He don't make sure make... he has all the beer on ice. Oh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I want to go in there at 8 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> no, I'd rather, I'd rather come, uh, I'd rather come up to a place like, uh, this, or, uh, 
up in Rudy's. It's uh, it's more of an interesting morning crowd. Oh, the vicar is a bugger and mofo. Oh, the vicar is a bugger and mofo. Oh, the vicar is a bugger and the curate is another. And they bugger one another and mofo. <laughs> This is where the misfits meet. This is where the music is great. And this is where you can wake up in the morning and be home. This place violates the law. They're open at dawn. They don't care. I mean, it's, it's, uh... you like to drink in the morning? In the morning. Yeah. Because in the night, it's too. You get off at 5, 6 o'clock at night. You know, I mean, you know, let's go out for a drink. Yeah. When we get off at 8 in the morning. All those people that get off at 5 are like, oh my God, you drink in the morning? You know, what are you talking about? Well, listen, it's my schedule's completely as backwards and yours is. It's either us midnight guys or just the complete alcoholics. Unlike ourselves. Okay. <laughs> well, there are some people that they can continue partying for 24 hours. And especially like Saturday morning, some people are left over from Friday night and they come in here and they already had quite a few, you know and they want to keep on going. It's kind of fun to see the aftermath also when you haven't been a part of what's gone on the night before. Let's say a guy your age or my age that would come into it. He would be, you know, like if he was out at 8 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, he'd be with his girlfriend or whatever friends, you know, and, you know, it would be more like rocking and rolling. It, tend to be more right. tense. Yeah, I get you. You're right. Whereas the same guy coming in in the morning would be more uh, relaxed. He, he, you know, even even if he was up the night before or he just like had the next day off and he wanted to come in for like a few morning pops uh, would be ten, 10 times more relaxed. They were called the early openers. And uh, they opened at five o'clock in the morning. So it was really great, you know, if you you're at a party and you run out of beer or something like that, and you uh, you would have to. Uh, so everybody would sort of get in a cab, and you just say to the cab driver, "Well, uh, take me down to an early opener," and. Uh, they drive you straight down to the docks, and uh, it'd be great sitting there. Because uh, I'd be working on the, I was working on the docks at the time, and I was also coming from some of the parties. And uh, you'd be in there, and you're with all these um, guys and their dungarees, and uh, getting ready for a day's work, having a couple of quick ones before they start. And then you'd see somebody come in in a ball gown, accompanied by a fellow in a tuxedo. And it would just, uh, I mean, it was just such a beautiful blend of everything that would go on. The leftovers from the party and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, the fellows that are starting a hard day's work. <laughs> it, was, it was a delight. The majority of people that have a drink in the morning, are either unwinding or winding up from their job or to their job. They, they they come in, in different sizes. I age age. They come about twenty one. They come here. They have a drink. They have a couple of drinks and they go to their job. I want to drink. I want to drink of my job. I work. I work a lot of hours. What do you do? Uh. Maintenance. Uh, Let's say maintenance. That that would cover everything. Okay. 
Journeyman is a guy who goes out, got fish, you got like a hand truck or one of those uh, forklifts filled with fish. Okay. You take it different places and drop uh -huh. it off, you know? Yeah, I do the gigs and I do a little like uh, data entry work. Yeah. Temp? Or are you yeah, temp. I do temp, yeah. What I do, it's good money. No, no, it's good, it's good money. money. It's good money. And people are prejudiced against that. I used to work in the Moscow Circus. I was a bear trainer. No, investigate for the bank. Okay. Yeah. They jealous, man. You know, you know, you make more money. You know, yeah, the money you make. You know, you know. It's crazy, man. I don't. I, and I hate that. You know. I still work on the side. What do you do? I work for an artist. An artist assistant. Security. But I got a fuck work. I work at McDonald's. Well, I um, I'm on a coffee break now, <laughs> okay? And I have a staff back there, and they have to maintain it what they got to do. That's your staff. You're the employer. Yeah. Guy. And when I go back, I oversee them. If they didn't do what they wanted to do, hey, somebody's gonna get head go to go. You show up on a job and this guy is, just got hit by a car and he's a fucking bloody mangle. There's a pile of spaghetti. You know what? Yeah, we gotta flat. jump in there and we gotta do what we're trained to do. If somebody on your staff who smelled beer on their breath, would you have a problem with that in and of itself? Since no. I was just, I was just, if they're not functioning on a job or they're getting abusive to another employee, then I'll have to pull them in and say, what's going on here today? Are there any tricks to the trade if you do have a drink, uh, you know, in terms of covering that, or is it sometimes uncoverable? <laughs> I have some. But I'm just... That's a very tricky question. <laughs> as long as you don't have too many so you can still walk straight and, and, and talk straight um, and have a bit of um, big red gum. Big red, okay. <laughs> Do you cover up like, with breath mints or anything after? Yeah, you get wherever it. you work, it's cool. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you, yeah, you get the, you got mom mints. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if my boss get a hold of this, man, I'm in deep shit. I'm legal. I'm on lunch. I ain't even here. Bud's supposed to make intelligent, right? He made Bud wiser. He's so silly. But I'll tell you what he does that's great. He said to me one day, when a few times I lost my temper, he says to me, you know, Lou, it's so rare to see the hawk show compassion to the meadowlark, even though they share the same sky. I said, that's pretty deep. I have no idea what you're talking about, except that I know you're watching Charlie Chen moves at 2 o'clock in the morning on Channel 5. <laughs> he has the type of stuff he comes out with. A one-legged duck swims in circles. In this country, people, because people, many people get lonely. If no, you have friends, but people doesn't really meet friends at home or sometimes. It's a place when people go to bar, talk to each other, make conversation, like meet people, meet, make friends. It's like social club. People, some people come up here and bring some all kind of like uh, private problems uh, and share with other people. With the help with advice or even to be with somebody. Some people like get lonely, like some get some have like have lost somebody. So and doesn't know what to do, doesn't know to, who talking to. Them. So they came to go to the bar and talk to people. People really understand about this one. It's really help. It's really it's making me happy. This is right. my second girlfriend right here. <laughs> All right. This was just after the World Trade Center bombing, and uh, I came in with the beard and everything, and the, and the hair and everything First time else. I ever and see he him. thought I was a terrorist. <laughs> he was going to have me arrested. I said, I said, he had very many walkers. I said, did you bomb the World Trade Center? He said, what do you say? I said, you look like a fucking terrorist. <laughs> that was my greeting to you, right? Yep. Never met you before. That's, that's yep. how I met Sully. Oh, we had our battles since too. That was oh. good battles. Though. Disagreements. 
That's not what that's that's what love's about. At the moment, I like uh, family bars, you know, close by the neighborhood. You know, you, you know the man's wife, you know, a husband, uh, you know, a uh, guy, you know, uh, working people, you know, old people. You know, you know most of the bar. Right. I don't mean kids. When I say family bar, uh, people you know, you friendly with. Gentlemen, I'll be here. For him, I met outside on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and I hurt my back when I met him. I was trying to lift him up. You remember that day? No, he wouldn't remember. But that's what happened. It was early in the morning. And the first thing Rowley says to me is, What do you do for a living? I said, Well, I'm a lawyer. Rowley says to me, I haven't met the guy before. He's like, Hey, lawyers. I said, thanks for making me feel so welcome. But the way the guy said it, I really like the guy. Right, he was the good. Yeah. You know, he's a big fat donkey from uh, uh, from Brooklyn. You know, right away, he's just a good guy. I meet my friend in the morning. There I was where I unexpected to see him. In that in today, yeah? Yes, at this hour of the morning, I was unexpected to see him. And I'm glad I meet him. Yeah. Yes, because, uh, uh, you know, anyway. I don't want to go. He was here. I just got up early. I was doing some shopping and shit. And just decided to stop in while I was out and about. Uh, I've known a lot of people in, through the bar, really. You know, I've lived in the neighborhood about 20 years or more. You know, more of about 25. And I just, at working in the bar, I've got to know people on the street. You know, they say hello to you. So it's a, it has like a small town feeling, you know? Um, are you a married man, Billy? No, no, no. Uh, you got kids? Yeah. Uh, are you still friendly with your ex-wife? No. That... Having a family, I expanded into a very big expensive loft where I have a workshop and everything set up there. All right. And I had to work bloody hard to, the beginning, yeah. to keep ahead of things, to pay the rent, to pay for the family to go out and have a drink <laughs> and um, it didn't quite click in terms of you know just in a, a creative difference or an artistic difference certainly not emotional or I think she still digs me I still dig her this previous wife, uh, she, she developed uh, some kind of a problem, and they, they they give her some pills, and she swallowed all these pills, she died. A bit of small education, and I have no trade or anything. I guess the the marriage part is uh, it's good that it turned out that I didn't get married. Are you happy? Uh, right now, no. Why not? Uh, because I'm blocking uh, a relation, relationship. You're breaking it off? Yes. And Are also... You or is, or is the other person? It's both. And also, my, uh, I have another problem with my family, you know, in France. They, they are my grandchildren, but they stay there, I'm stay here. Do you miss them? I don't miss them at all. What is your most expensive possession? My son. And only as the babies were like little rabbits. They were all um, you know, premature and they were in incubators and things like that. Four pounds, six pounds. Or whatever, yes. And here's this this kid that only arrived yesterday. He sort of Flying back like this by the window, you know, with the breeze blowing in and... Um, you know. That's the most beautiful thing I've seen. And to add on to that, he's probably the closest friend I have. I don't have nobody. Why not? I'm a loner. You're a loner? I'm a loner. Is that part of the cowboy? No, I don't know. It's just my way. Years ago, I liked the family bars more than I do today. Why is that? And have they changed? Well, yeah, uh, not the bars themselves, but uh, the crime. 
You got different uh, uh, people uh, in the client business. Uh -huh. And years ago, you could walk out and still get robbed, but uh, it seemed more safe. Right. And uh, where the family bar would come in, a number of people that may not be drinking may recognize you and say, Jim, would you uh, let me walk you home if it's only one or two blocks? We're born and raised as fucking if we own this neighborhood. Never mind who. Huh? Never mind who. You guys. Man, man, you know, we were here first. Like Fuck the Indians. Yeah. <laughs> 24 fucking dollars, we fucked them. The only American that's living American is a fucking Indian. If you think about it. No, no, they were here when they got here. But how can they say they're better than the Indian? They're more American than the Indian. You can't say that. And my people. <laughs> We didn't, I mean, we were brought here under slavery. We didn't ask to get come here. How long the porn rank has been in Hell's Kitchen? Too like, long. Can you, uh, you say it like that year wise? Or, or? Too long. Yeah, yeah, I think it got about right. They've been there too long. <laughs> Who was here first? I mean, Us. Irish? Yeah, definitely. Was it Italian too? It's Italian. Right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, you know. Like uh, turn of the century. Yeah, it's, one, it's one of those guinea uh, crops. Hey, 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 hey. I've been here since 1962. I have seen Im immigrants come through here and succeed. And I still believe in Hell's Kitchen. Although it's changed, and people have a negative feeling about it. I believe in people that come here, give me your tie and your poor, your people yearning to be free. What I don't believe is in people that always suck off of our country, that don't want to work. I'm on social security disability. They resent me. Now, this was always a great neighborhood. It was always like regular people. Before you fucking spicks came in the fucking neighborhood. Oh. Hey, hey, we didn't want to come. You guys lied to us. No, All you these job opportunities. <laughs> All these false job opportunities. We tried to kill you. And, oh, yeah. Well, I'm going... I'm going by the East Village. 10 to 15 years ago, you said it was... Like Hispanic and Eastern European. Some Italians, you know. And, uh... I mean, now it's like Cafe City and, uh, you know, uh, get your rap here and, like, uh... And, 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 and get your Frappuccino and, uh... It's... It's changed the character of the neighborhood. In your opinion, sir, has this neighborhood changed? <laughs> oh my God. Yes. How so? You used to be able to walk outside and be able to have a good time. You could walk outside with your beer to talk to your friends. Just over there, not trying to do anything, not trying to bother anybody. All of a sudden, sooner or later, you could end up like this. Just yeah, for doing cool. that. Yeah. But now they are starting to, to, to build, you know, to go back to community slowly but surely, you know, it's coming along. How was it for the worst for a while? Well, drugs. The new generation, you know, they're like a little more wilder. You know, we was, I guess our generation was mischief. You know, we was always in mischievous things, but now it's opposite. It's more wilder and more blazing. You know, there's little red lights on top of those Terminator guns and shit. Oh, really? Fucking idiots. Went right across my chest. And there was cops all around, and there was a big catastrophe. And... Did you find out later? Was it just a little kid was a thing, or was it the real deal? Yeah. That scared me. Yeah, hurt being a cop, too, but I'm afraid of fire. Were you ever shot at? Yeah. Really? Were you ever shot? Yeah. Where? Outside of the belly. Was this on the hip? 
I took six. Six bullets? What happened? I had to make it. <laughs> what can I tell you? I mean, was it just a bad, you were shooting in the shootout with a bad It was guy? a firefight, what they call it. Got a bullet hole in the back of this leg. When you get mugged, so many times, uh, I, as I did, I get mugged. And, you know, strangle and everything. And you, you try to survive, as, you know, and go to a police station and people have to, to put on the ball like, like this, like the cops, and say, okay, you know, uh, I don't feel protected. You have a lot of cops that don't live in the metropolitan area. You know, they, they are born or they come from Long Island and Jersey and Connecticut and so forth. So they really don't know how to deal with people from the inner city. You put me in jail for a tiny bag of grass like this, a $5 grass, I have to spend three days in jail. I think the man should be able to piss in the street. Yeah, the world's a toilet. Not, not, you go to jail for that, or is that? Yeah, they, they stopped me the other day, right now, 42nd Street, 10th Avenue. And I was shocked. I mean, I was taking a leak. I'm taking my leak, and there was a dog pissing right next to me. Hey, hey, can I? You know, there was a dog pissing right next to me, and, and, and these were under, undercover cops. They actually, you know, stopped doing what they were doing. That's what I did. I was lucky they didn't know the code to pissing in the street. And somebody else called, called them. And he gave me the uh, ticket, which was invalid. You know, he just said, here. Oh, really? He said, here, and don't, don't do it again. I was arrested, man. But I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Why did they arrest you? I was going to go, but then I kept calling and calling and calling. I kept the robbery. Was it true? No. The day before, you want to give us details? details. Or? What kind of details? What, 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 how would that happen? Where was it? Houston, New York? No, mistaken identity. What's that? Oh, mistaken identity, but it's in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. What do you think of New York police? Honestly. I'm reading it right now, really. They're the worst. Yeah? Why? I'm not... I, 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 because what they do, they're not going by the procedures, okay? You lock somebody up, you incarcerate them, fine. But with this brutality, something has to give. I don't give a damn if they're white, black, green, or yellow. Something has to give. And this is, with this, these kids, these guys there, it's uncalled for. They're doing a good job. They're doing a really good job. Yeah. I think they're getting slack in the last few months here in the city. Yeah, with the media. yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a definite. There's no question about it. Uh, but because yeah. they made a quality of life in New York much much better. Cop is a cop. He's a cop. So I don't think I'm all that much, but it's their job. So we thought he was still alive. Took him back into town, which was about, I don't know, five, seven miles away. And, um, and he was dead. So I was arrested. He came over and he stood within about four feet of me. And in Thai, said to, with his two lieutenants, I want to, I'm going to have him tonight. So that I've, I've never fucked anybody with round eyes. So then later that night, I was ready and I was, as I say, I was as scared as hell. And you just, um, and just, when he came after lights out at 10 o'clock, uh, I just, I just attacked him. I gave him no chance of defense or anything. I just, I just went for him with everything that I had. I mean, literally, I mean, with my bare body, but that was all. That's all I had. Um, and he died.
So, when I die, what do you want to do with me? You do me. You cremate me, and you bury me. And the way you look at it, you're only cheating. The, you're only cheating. You're only cheating the gods. You only what? You only cheating the gods. When they cremate you, they only cheating the gods. I'm sorry. What's that quote, man? When you when they cremate you, right. when they bring your body, they only cremate. They only cheating the gods. Uh, yeah. You know why? Why? The food's with the gods. No, no, I mean, I mean, look at that. I mean, I mean, you, you know, like, uh, we all got, we all food to something. This is like we, we beef, we pork, right? Yeah. We lamb, whatever else. There's something gonna eat up. Why did the hurricane say to the Oh, coconut, this ain't that old joke. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Why did the hurricane say to the coconut tree? Watch your nuts, there's a blowjob coming. <laughs> Do you sleep with prostitutes? Oh my god! Sleep with them? Yes. No, not, not a wink. No, I've had a couple of blowjobs. But I don't sleep with them or fuck them, no. I had a couple of blowjobs, quite frankly. But sleeping them will blow, I mean, no. Not knowingly. <laughs> you surprised the two. You got a new one, you got a new one. got a long one. You got a new one. Sometimes. Sometimes somebody I know. Wait, no. Yeah, we're going to make I don't, I, I don't think about it. When, when I get it off, I get it off. I can look at a magazine and it might uh, right. affect my imagination. Fantasy, right. I'd like to sleep with a couple. But you didn't yeah, see the four out here this morning. No, you didn't see the ones in Mexico for American dollars. Didn't do all right over there. My, my, uh, my penis doesn't have no uh, conscience. It's not like, you know, I don't see Susie and Jane going, getting all dressed up in their makeup, coming out to, hey, it's 30, we gotta hit the bars, AM, you know? I don't, it just doesn't happen. Well, Simon, why don't women come out to the bar in the morning? What is the reason for that? I would say they're mostly afraid to, because <laughs> of the demons that are out there. <laughs> Willem Dafoe, without a doubt, straight out, Willem Dafoe. I would follow him down the street. I used to think that about Peter O'Toole, but um, I have my doubts, but I think perhaps I'd follow him a block or two anyway. I remember, I remember one time, Phyllis Diller came in here. No, actually, I have one wife uh -huh. and a whole bunch of kids. Happily married, You know that Puerto Rican thing. Yeah, my wife is gorgeous. I yeah. scale from one to yeah. ten, she's a 12. I scale, oh. she's a doll. She come in here or only looking for me? <laughs> are you absolutely heterosexual or are you bi? No, I'm heterosexual. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Man. Drag shows, go-go boys, a back downstairs bar, um, you know, a back room. Behind the curtain, right? Well, no, downstairs. It was the entire... Oh, really? Like, that late? Yeah, a whole... It, it was the wildest place, and then you go there from a night of partying, and then wake up in the meat district. And you had sides of beef being slung at you. When's the last time you had sex? 
Oh, a long time ago. <laughs> I just asked a question, man. A long time ago. <laughs> I'm AIDS afraid. <laughs> Hey, get, 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 I've been married three times. But not presently? Or? No. No? You guys broke up? No, we're still together. We just ain't married. That's married. You do all right with sex? Do you get a lot of sex lately? I get my shit. <laughs> I could have sworn I caught these two people getting it on on the corner of this bar one morning, like, over it, like, you know, her skirt was hiked up. He had her a certain way. It was, it was positioned nicely that I couldn't see anything, but... My guess was there was some definite penetration going on there. Anything over six months is freaking married. You got an old lady though. You got a Yeah. Five years. Happy? But we ain't married. You happy? Oh yeah. She wants she to get married. Ain't. <laughs> she wants to get married, right? Why not why don't you want to take the commitment? She don't want to marry him? No, she wants to marry me, <laughs> I don't want to marry her. Just because of the past it didn't work out. Yeah, because you know what happens? You get fucking married and they get that fucking women are crazy. They get that fucking piece of paper and they go nuts. Oh, Fuck marriage. Good. Marriage is three rings. Three rings? Did you know that? No, I mean, no. Two rings, right? See, a fucking dummy or what? <laughs> three rings. Engagement? Yeah, the wedding engagement ring, ring <laughs> the wedding ring, right? and the suffering. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting in the park with a bottle of beer in a paper bag. And these two guys came, you know, two well-dressed guys came by. Well, I say well-dressed, you know, cleanly dressed and so on. And they said, uh, and I, I was clean. I was reading a book and I had a bottle of beer sort of on the side so the cops wouldn't see it. And. Um, One of them said, um, are you homeless? And I said, no. But thank you. I said, are, are you, uh, do you, do you need work? Do you need, do you need food? And I said, sure. So they gave me a card and that was the card for the soup kitchen. And that's how it happened. I was homeless. And I went to uh, the dwelling place on 40th Street. It was not pleasant because, and I don't, I don't care to mention, you know, female sexuality. But it was a tough go. Being a woman in this facility, is right? yeah, a real feel, of, you know, female. Right. And. Uh, I left, and a friend of mine that was there 
brought me into this place. It turned out she was a heroin addict, and I went through terrible abuse. Have you ever contemplated suicide? Uh, I attempted suicide. How? Uh, an overdose of uh, medication. How do you feel about that now? I feel that it was a very stupid thing to do. How many, what did you do? What specifically, what medication, how many medication? Um, It was the, the medication that they said I needed to take for the rest of my life, well, otherwise I wouldn't be able to re-enter society. Darvon, Xanax. Uh, it was that, uh, no, no, Depakote and uh, well, Wellbutrin, Wellbutrin, Wellbutrin. And you, you literally, what, you purposely took how many? About, pills? about 100 pills, about 60 Depakote, about 40 Aspirin and about 40 well return. What's the last dream you had? Oh, I'll tell you. I had a foster child in 1988 that was HIV positive. And my dream is because she's a foster child in New Jersey and I know that she may come back to me, if at all possible and that I loved her very much, and I know I gave her love, and uh, whatever will be. And God bless her. And that I may be able to have other children with disabilities. And I'm gonna cry. <laughs> because I love children, I love animals and I love all people, but especially I love this little girl, Rebecca Lee, that I took out of St. Vincent of Staten Island and I held her in my arms for two and a half years when her family would not take her. And then I had to let her, up, let her go. But I know that I gave her love and I hope that God gives you that opportunity again yeah. to take some children and that's all I want in life. You better talk to me. I'm not, I'm not a great one for remembering my dreams. It was like something like uh, a big old orgy. <laughs> <laughs> love is short to you. Yeah. It's going to camp. Yeah. Uh, big old orgy. <laughs> um, are you a good tipper? What? Cheers. Uh, what? What's the last dream you had? Oh, jeez, I have all kinds of things. What last, dream? Or? You let that you remember and give last us some dream. details. Oh my God. We already had Simon this one. Oh, jeez, I just had one. I was just talking about it. I had some, I've been having some vibrant dreams recently. The last one. You have a flying dream? Yes. Where I fly? Sure I have. I love them. Yes. Some people say you're actually flying there. It's like an out-of-body experience. I think I am. I, and I know how I take off, too. It's, I know this is an offshoot, but you know... No. No. I wait for the wind to come up. And I, and I go like this. And lift backwards. Like my body gets lifted up like this. And then... I like I, I go backwards and then forward. You know what I'm saying? The wind takes me back up, and then I come, then I come down, and then go up. And you regularly have these dreams? Or yes, you? regularly. All oh, since I was a kid, a baby. Are they your best dreams? Would you say? Well, they're drier than some of my best dreams. <laughs> Sunday no problem. Immediately after church is a good time for drinking. Do you go to church? No. <laughs> this is church. Man, uh, this is church. Would you consider yourself a religious woman? Uh, no, but faithful. Faithful to your man or faithful to a certain spirituality? Faithful to the ineffable, you know, to the fact that there's a... Uh, a creative power, inevitable, that put life into all of this. Everybody that got on the bus, she just got up and she started giving out pamphlets. And after every couple of rides went by, she would come back and give out more pamphlets. And I was like, lady, I wanted to say it, but I didn't say it. 
You know, I want to say why you're forcing your religion on other people. You know what I mean? Rise up. You know, there's a, a, a scripture in Jeremiah. We, should, we shall rise up and rebuild. Amen. We have to believe in something, though. Sure. Have to believe. I don't believe in atomic bomb or H bomb. Never happened, yeah. right? Never happened. But it happened. No, I didn't wrote. I didn't wrote the Bible. I don't know who wrote the Bible. I don't know where the Bible came from. But as long as I was big enough to for my brain to comprehend whatever's happening in this universe, God is God. So who the hell am I? I mean, I mean, to say that He's not. I'm a Catholic. You go to church? No. Yeah, here. Like here? Or even if it happens? Yeah, no, here. Yeah. Church is here. <laughs> this is church. You're in church now. Yeah, what do you want from me? <laughs> you ever experienced hangovers? Yeah. Regularly? I mean, how, what no, 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 no. Only like a, a special occasion. Like if you go. Yeah, like a weekend, wedding or, yeah. I get you. Do you have a vacation. What's that? Go on vacation. Right. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Uh, do you have a remedy? Do you have a, uh, you know, something that No. You yeah, get up and get another one. No, get you. Do you ever suffer hangovers? No. I, I'm sorry I'm blessed with a tremendous uh, strength. Hangover? Yeah. No. This don't give you a hangover. Jack Daniels don't give you a no, hangover? No, I don't. I mean... I mean to you, honestly, it don't give you a hangover. Do you ever suffer hangovers? Yes. Do you have a remedy? Usually a can of Coke. I think the can offers just the right amount of carbonation needed. Specifically the can? The can, specifically can. Two Advil mm -hmm. and a big jug of water. Ice cold Kool-Aid. Yeah? Ice cold Kool-Aid. <laughs> And I'm the great Kool-Aid maker. Yeah. Yes. You have it in the fridge. Like you yes. Got it all ready yes. Look. Yes. That's wild. That, that'll you know? do it, huh? And my wife loves my Kool-Aid. She says I never had no Kool-Aid better, and all the kids love it. So. Does he ever uh, experience hangovers? Every day. Does he ever throw up? Uh, no, he doesn't throw up. He just falls down. <laughs> do you ever suffer a hangover? Well, I'm sure we all have at one point or another. <laughs> you may have, you probably have many ones as you look. <laughs> time this video is over, I'm sure you could give me the remedy. <laughs>
and many other people would consider me an alcoholic. <laughs> you drink every morning? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Gotta have a cocktail to get sure. my energy for that freaking job. Would you consider yourself an alcoholic? Functional, yeah. Functional one? How do you feel about that? Does that upset you? Do you have any problems with that? No. Or it is just what it is? I think so. Which knows about this? He's been alcoholic for a long time. Yes. Oh. I don't. Because I'm not in denial. Because now he's fall down drunk all over the joint. You drink every day? Yeah, yeah. I try to. You know, I have a choice. What happens if you don't drink? He gets the shakes. And then I get, I'm broke. He's like this. Honestly, you get the DTs? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's that like? It's like that. You get used to it. Is it a mind thing, too? Like, I heard you hallucinate? No, or? no, no. I just like to drink. Uh, he does hallucinate. He says, I wish I had a drink right now. <laughs> um, would you consider yourself an alcoholic? We all are here on Night Day. What the hell? <laughs> um, how do you feel about that? Don't mind me. I'm a different type of alcohol. <laughs> Are you an alcoholic? Sometimes. Uh, well, sometimes you're probably not, right? Well, you well, you tell me what. Uh, an alcoholic uh, doesn't have to be somebody laying down the street. What if I have one beer every day? Well, in moderation. <laughs> in moderation. I mean, if you get drunk every day, then I consider you an alcoholic. But if you have like one beer, I'll give you a little leeway. I drink, I drink Bix and I drink Heineken. Uh -huh. That's beer, it. Heineken, yeah. But I don't, but I, 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 for alcohol, this is it. I mean, uh, this is it. Only Jack Daniels. I'm here to calm down. Not because I'm an alcoholic, because I'm very upset. In the place I live on 42nd Street, they have broken into my apartment. They have taken things, but mostly important is that I need an air purification system. They have stolen my air filters. They have prevented me from obtaining them. Even when it went down to, you know, JC Music World, they followed me. I have, you know, a phone, they have listened in on it. I know there's a wiretap. I don't know what to do about it, and perhaps I need your help. If you had an unlimited supply, unlimited supply for life of Budweiser, where would you be right now? I would be in a morgue. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe two arm, two arms lengths, and, and and a leg and a half. <laughs> be, uh, uh, no, a beer. <laughs> well, AA became absolutely redundant as far as I was concerned. I'd leave an AA meeting and feel like having a drink. And uh, and then um, acupuncture worked. Acupuncture or pressure? The actual needles. No, no, needles in the ear. That worked, huh? In the knee, yes. In the, in the ear. Yes. But um, and it was very interesting. I was very interested in the well. I, as I mentioned, I've spent a lot of time Singapore, in Southeast Asia yeah. and so on. So I was very interested with the uh, with the process. But. Um, you know, it's the old story. I just, uh, you know, okay, I feel comfortable, I feel pretty good. I'll go and have a beer. And uh, so now I've, um, I guess in a way, come to a resignation of reality that, um, yes. There's no life without drinking.
why don't you put that book back in the briefcase? Yeah, all right, that's enough. <laughs> I, you know, I wanna, well, look, guys, thanks a lot, man. This has really been very helpful. Uh, listen, uh, how about some cash? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how about a copy of the film? It's fifty dollars worth. <laughs> How about some cash, guys? I'll, I'll do two things. Copy the film, and then we'll, pl we'll play some back right now to show you, show you guys. You want to see that? I can't see that fucking thing. Let me, let me ask you something. You're not tapping that for the FBI for some information? Who's that? I don't know. You know what is it, the FBI? I'm asking you. They, uh, I don't know where that is oh, going. No. I think the FBI has better equipment. You know what? I'm sorry, I don't know I'm what your guys' opinion are. Listen, I'm been... not the nemesis for no, this. I don't know what this is all about. Anything you want to say, go ahead and say it. I'm absolutely serious. Oh, the battery? $2,300 also. I don't, know, like, I don't know what they're doing. Okay. You look good I do. I can't see oh, myself. Oh, we have a nice smile. Nice smile.